right, it is another Thursday evening in COVID land. And I am your host, SK Barrett, and this is Real Monsters. And joining me is the ever popular Wes Hobrick. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, and that's good that, like you were saying before we went on air, that it's kind of getting back to normal out there in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, it it, it is in a lot of ways, yeah. I, I tell you what, you know, uh, the grocery stores, there's a lot of masks. Yeah. Not everybody, but a lot of people. And Costco is requiring masks to enter the store. Oh, man, it irritated the living hell out of me on the way to work today when I went in and got coffee at the usual C store that I go to. Yeah. There was, they had a sign on the door saying visitors are required to wear a facial covering. Yeah. And I had mine on. Yeah. Nobody else had theirs on in there, which yeah. I'm like, okay, if they're not showing any symptoms, I can live with that. But then some jackass comes in to get a fountain soda, coughing his lungs out. And, oh, nice. yeah, he got in line behind me. And the uh, girls who bagged my stuff up, to her credit, she did it rather fast when she saw that. So I got the hell out of there as fast as I could. <laughs> I do not know when Illinois will be returning to normal. I mean, with our governor, it's hard to tell. You know, right, there's, right. I mean, there's Chicago, but that's its own thing, and then the rest of us downstate. Hey, we're it could in. be worse. You could be in Michigan. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> this is very true. Yeah. Or New York. Yeah. But um, getting into, in fact, the news, the first item I had. The uh, unhinged woman who was arrested in front of the USS Intrepid hospital ship in New York City making threats against Biden is actually from this neck of the woods. Uh -huh. Yeah, Peoria, Illinois. Uh, Bradley University, maybe an hour and a half northeast of here. But... Um, yeah, she was arrested with knives and live-streamed it and everything. Um, and what did the ship have to do with Biden? I don't know what I mean, that had to do with it. If it Maybe I'm just trying in. to bring logic into a crazy situation. And it might just be that they found her in front of it. But I honestly, I don't know if that factored into... You. Her uh, threats, which were against Biden, though. Um, but yeah, they arrested her out there in New York City in front of it. So, but um, wow. a couple other interesting items. He had a shooting. Nobody was hurt, though. A shooting in front of the Cuban embassy in um, Washington, D.C. They had a 42-year-old Texas man in custody for that. Um, oh, a Tinder meeting up in Michigan turned into a robbery. So That's not the first time, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, likely not. Oh, yeah, and then the uh, romance novelist allegedly killed her chef husband. And here's the kicker. Yeah. She wrote an essay about how to kill your husband some years before. <laughs> uh, pro tip if you write an essay on how to kill somebody do not follow your own instructions when actually following through that's just this bad for true form. that's just dumb <laughs> yeah pretty much i'd be like um, carol baskin saying you know if you want to kill somebody feed him to a lion <laughs> this is how i cut him up before i fed him to the cats but yeah um oh m and m um, repelled a home invader in his Detroit gated community house. Wow. Uh, apparently, the guy got past his security, who were literally asleep, and uh, <laughs> got in there. And... Oopsie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Eminem held him and they arrested the guy. So, uh, let's see. In other news, a Queens man. Killed his COVID survivor mom. 
and they are not sure why. Uh, reading that one, it kind of sounded like temporary crazy to me. Um, but that one will be more developments, I'm sure, as the court case plays out. Then over in Pittsburgh yesterday, you had a COVID researcher who was shot in a murder-suicide. Um, wow. That one, people might be seeing a lot of conspiracy nonsense infest their uh, right, social right. media feeds yeah, on this one. It had nothing to do with his work. Right. <laughs> it was he, a uh, love triangle. Yes. Yes, that's exactly what it was. The police came out later and said it was a uh, domestic partner dispute that prompted it. Yeah. So, um, let's see. A Michigan man walked into a Dollar Tree without a mask, and when he was told by the cashier that he had to have one, he allegedly wiped his mucus all over her shirt. Yeah, yeah. see... You know, four months ago, that could have been simple battery. Um, yeah. But you, the case could be made for attempted murder now. Yeah, it really could. And, you know, it sucks that a lot of departments are running on less resources with all this. But yeah, I hope that they lock people like that up and for a long time. And not salon uh, keep owners you know don't yeah. don't let the rapists out and then lock up small business owners use some yeah. sense you idiots <laughs> yeah exactly exactly um oh this one was interesting a Ca california highway patrol chase one million dollars was scattered all over the road in merced <laughs> county <laughs> on purpose or on accident uh, apparently it was on accident. It was two New York men who had it and they were scheming to buy pot and get it back to their state to deal. Um, and they yeah, lost the they, bag? <laughs> oh no, the cops cleaned it up. They did. No, but, I mean, yeah. they lost the bag on the freeway or were they oh. tossing it, uh, tossing the evidence? Oh, um, no, I think they lost the bag on the freeway. <laughs> Pretty <dumb> much, <laughs> but... I've been, um, I've been re-watching uh, that 70s show, so dumbass is now a favorite term again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, it's yeah, so I'm appropriate sure... in so many instances. Oh, it absolutely is. Um, I'm sure people have been following the case of um, Ahmad Arbery out of Georgia, too. I have I think, uh, avoided watching that video. I have, too. But I haven't yet watched it. It seems fairly clear-cut. But, you know, it, that's not always the case. Yeah. I mean, this one I'm a little bit hesitant to say much about until there's a yeah. little bit more fleshed out about it it's gonna uh, be a grand jury though so they'll get to see it yeah absolutely and if it was indeed murder yeah prosecute him to the fullest extent of the law because that's bullshit if a guy's just out drag um jogging and that happens but oh yeah um, the Utah Highway Patrol <laughs> I love this uh, story <laughs> and the follow-up uh, a five-year-old was pulled over in Utah after trying to drive to California to buy a Lamborghini. He took the family car out for a spin <laughs> at five. <laughs> yeah. How the hell is he reaching the controls? That's what I want to know. <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, very interesting there. I heard he got to uh, drive a Lambo or sit right in a in Lambo one. Right or something. In one. Yeah. Oh, he did. Uh, That's yeah. great. A local guy who owned a Lambo uh, took him out for a spin. Oh, there you go. Man, that's awesome. That one made my See, day. See, crime but... does pay. <laughs> <laughs> and now, I think the, uh, the funniest <laughs> one, saving for last year, a drunk Ohio woman 
called into her local 911 to say that her pussy was on fire. That's a direct <laughs> quote. She needs that. Can the firemen send their hoses to put it out, is what she said. <laughs> And apparently she was so intoxicated she hung up and they called back. Which and they she will repeated do. the same thing. She said, my pussy is on fire. Can the firemen send their hoses to put it out? Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's probably something that antibiotics can clear up. <laughs> Let's hope so. But... <laughs> Yeah, that woman is in jail. Yeah. As of now. Um, if you're yeah. drunk, do not call 911. Yeah, yeah, do not drunk dial 911. No, please. it will not go well. Uh, but yeah, this um, case that we're going to get into tonight is really something. Yes. Yes. And I remember. I remember reading about the surprise twist that I will not reveal at this time, but I remember reading about it when it happened, and it was, uh, uh, it, it changed an entire industry. Yeah, it really did. Well, it changed a uh, couple of them, actually, but yeah, we'll get yeah, into true. that. True. Um, this is a, a serial killer that you likely have never heard of, the Phantom of Heilbronn. Um, and the first case regarding this was in Eidar Oberstein, Germany. I think we have a map. Of I the, uh, have a map for you. Various reported crimes. These were about 40 crimes that we're going to get into the uh, more important ones. Stretched out over Germany, Austria, and France. So a tri-country serial killer. In um, May 23rd, 1923, or 1993. I was going to say, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, 62-year-old Lisa Let Schlanger was found murdered in her home. She was strangled, garroted, basically, with the wire she used on the floral arrangement on her table. Oh, if you can so picture it, that. So it was in her, it was, the weapon was in her own house. That's crazy. A weapon of opportunity. Which you typically associate with the old, you know, turn of the century uh, axe murderers. This is true. Yeah, that would be very re relevant with Velisca and mm -hmm. the uh, Axeman of New Orleans. There's just two of them there. But, um, yeah, the day before, she had drawn her savings at the bank. Um, detectives didn't find the cash in her house, but they discovered unknown female DNA on Schlanger's coffee cup on the rim of it. And the uh, cup was apparently sitting right by her body when they found that. Hmm. So, so that's going to be important here as we talk about these. Think about where they're finding this evidence and its placement, as it were. So, so far we have a coffee cup. Yes. We have okay. unknown female DNA on a coffee cup. At the crime and, scene. And keep in mind, this is 1993, so they didn't test that at the time. They didn't know that it was unknown and female. Okay. Um, but, but they took swabs? Yes, they took okay. swabs at the time. They actually tested that only in 2001, which will be a... Uh, pretty relevant year yeah. as we go on here because there were actually no other related crimes in this series between 1994 and 2000 that investigators could find oh really so there was a huge gap yeah about a six-year gap there which 
as we've um, talked about extensively before, that can be because of somebody dying. It right. can be because they were um, incarcerated for something else. In some uh, other part of the world? Yeah. Yeah, or they right. just moved. They picked right. up shop and moved. took it elsewhere. Right. But uh, March 26th, 2001 in Freiburg, Germany. Um, number two on the map there. He had 61 oh, year old. Those are those are cities, not victim names. Yes, yes. Gotcha. Yeah, the uh, black Frank Reich is uh, France. Frank Reich. Yeah, yeah. Frank Reich. Austria. And you have the different German states, and then the numbers are cities in there. Gotcha. Uh, but March 26th, 01, 61-year-old Joseph Walzenbach, he's an uh, antique dealer, is found murdered in his home. He had been garroted again with a belt and beaten severely with a blunt object. Um, cash had been taken. And DNA was actually found here that we would learn a little bit later in the year when they tested the Schlanger DNA yeah. was similar. It was the same DNA between the two. And that's what connected him. Yes. There is, uh, geographically, you're talking about 300 kilometers between the two. Well, as we can see on the map. Which is, uh, you know... 150-ish miles, which is, you know, it's not walking distance, but um, it's not an impossible distance to go. I mean, it's not typical for uh, murderers to travel such distances to find victims, but mm -hmm. um, it's not unthinkable either. Well, and I think it's important to remember as well with that, that Germany was a uh, very automotive culture. Yes. Not unlike ours. So, I mean, right, 150 right, right. miles for driving really isn't all that much. A couple hours. Yeah. Especially yeah. in Germany. <laughs> um, but if you look at both of these the logical conclusion to the investigators was it's a murderous robber. Yeah, what they sure. had, what they had actually thought with these crime scenes was that Miss um, Schlanger and Mister Walzenbach had interrupted a robbery. Hmm, it's not an not an unreasonable thought. Mm -hmm. I thought so as well, and then had been killed because of that. Um, but this gets even more bizarre as we go on here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in Gerolstein, um, Deutschland, in September 01, a child stepped on a syringe in the, uh, in a playground yard okay. and injured their foot. Yeah. All right. And... The uh, kid's parents with that, when they took him to the hospital to test him for AIDS, was their big worry. Well, yeah. Said that, yeah. They said that we want an investigation of that. Why was there a syringe in our playground? Well, I can tell you somebody put it there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but they ended up taking a swab there. Okay. And that actually rested in a DNA database for about six years. Oh, but did you say where the DNA was found on number two on Freeburg? Oh, um, that one, there was DNA found on a drawer and on a doorknob. Okay. Same unknown female DNA. All right. So to recap so far, mm -hmm. we, have a, we have a coffee cup. A drawer and a doorknob, and now a syringe, a a syringe, syringe discarded in a park. Yes, yes, with heroin residue in it. Okay. Um, I'm not seeing the connection here. But they didn't actually find 
the phantom's DNA in that syringe until 2007. Oh. I don't know why it just sat there like that, but it did. Because there was no real crime? Yeah, that could be. No um, property crime, no complaining witness, as right. it were. Right. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we know that now, so we have another fact thrown into the mix that we have a female burglar who has killed two people in the commission of her crimes and is probably a junkie. Fair, wow. right? Yeah. Seems um, reasonable. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> as these go on, the DNA starts emerging sim seemingly without consistency in various other offenses. Car thefts in Austria. Um, let's see. And it basically a bunch of other burglaries in France. These were on um, vacation homes for the most part that they went through. And they just found it randomly all over. Um, autumn 2004 in Arbois, France, is the next big crime that comes up. There were Vietnamese traders. They were diamond merchants who were attacked by several robbers. And these robbers stole about 3,000 euros jewelry and a gold bar. And at the scene of the robbery, investigators found a reproduction of a uh, Beretta FS-92 pistol. And guess whose DNA occurs on that? The unknown female. Yes, the Phantom of Heilbronn. Um, yep. Man, this, this chick's getting around. She is. She absolutely is. Um, let's see. The four robbers in that crime were arrested soon after, and none of them admitted to a woman having been a part of that robbery. Is that the one with the, the three people, the the mugshot um no not yet okay yeah that one comes a little bit later but it's important to keep that in mind that none of them admitted to a woman ah um right. now and what does that possibly say they're protecting we have them. and we have her dna there but they're not admitting that she's a part it's a big mystery. I, I mean, typically <laughs> you, what you would say is they're protecting somebody. Yeah, basically. I mean, basically that's it. Or she knows how to really uh, bully them, right. as it were. Well, for, for protecting for whatever reason, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Could be, you know, feelings of protection or feelings of fear. Oh, absolutely. But um, 1993 to April of 2007, the Phantom's DNA is found in 30 different places wow. in Germany and Austria. You have home office supermarket burglaries, uh, thefts from vacation homes, campers and gardening sheds. And get this. Even on a shell fired at a uh, campground, and um, this one. Why would this why one would they was, even be checking that? <laughs> well, this one was interesting. It was a dispute between two uh, gypsy brothers. They were Romani, and um, apparently, this one shot the other oh. with a. Uh, I think it was a two-two-three pistol. And they were checking all that, and boom, here pops their DNA. Oh, a, a, a cartridge shell, not a seashell. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> cartridge shell. Yeah. I was yeah. thinking, why, why are they looking at a beach? <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
Yep. And gotcha. Yeah, I mean, it just gets more and more bizarre through all this. I mean, it's just the the range of places and surfaces where this DNA is turning up is insane. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, how the, the hell do you draw any kind of, you know, line through all of that? And, I mean, it's very hard. It's difficult. But um, in 2007, and it's actually scene seven on the map there, you have the uh, namesake um, of the Phantom. Heilbronn. Which was Heilbronn, where there were two police officers, Michelle Kaisevetter and the other one, he's just known as Martin A. in press accounts. They uh, pulled over at a place that's used for Oktoberfest. It's like a county fairground by a river that yeah. they use for Oktoberfest. And they were eating their lunch when they were both drug out of their cars and shot execution style. Oh. Both now, um, yes, uh, Kai Savetter did not survive. That is, that is her. Michelle Kaisebetter. But the but, other but the, her partner did? Yes. He did, but with total amnesia. Oh man. So serious brain damage. Um and that is what really kicked it, the hunt for the Phantom of Heilbronn into higher gear. And they after her murder. They booted the reward up to 300,000 euros for information leading to an arrest. Yeah, I don't, I don't doubt that at all. You, you know, um, murdering a police officer is one of the best ways to get yourself dead. Oh, absolutely. And it absolutely is. But the Phantom was still wreaking havoc all over these three countries at this time. In January 2008, at the Hesse River, there were three Georgian car dealers, Georgia the country, not Georgia the state, yeah, who were fished from the drink. And they had all also been shot execution style. And put into a car and drown. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Two were shot in the head. The third was strangled. There were two suspects who were arrested. Okay. And it, the police found the DNA in the car after they tore the entire thing apart. And tearing out the entire interior down to... Just the metal skeleton of it. And guess whose DNA pops up? Ooh, mystery check. <laughs> yeah, the Phantom. Yeah. But, like I said, two suspects arrested. Neither of them admitted to a female's involvement. Again. Again. Even though we have DNA Is proof. Is this like a female Kaiser Sose? <laughs> We shall see. And it, it just, it's so bizarre. Um, but, you know, they were more than willing to point the finger at the other guy for what happened. But they never admitted to a woman. Um, and it, about this time, in May 9, 2008, in a, the Saarland in Germany, there's a massive dragnet over that area in Austria and France. And the um, phantom strikes again. A cleaning lady is brutally attacked and mugged. But she survives. Okay. D despite being robbed of several hundred euros. And the mystery DNA appears again on the woman. Hmm. Um, October 26th, 2008. Um, Heilblon Weinberg, Diana Polenka, 45, a nurse, 
is found lying drowned in a pond and her car is nearby. Um, and that... Oh, I'm sorry, my notes were out of order there. But they found her nearby with the car and again, whose DNA pops up? The phantoms in the car. But now that was one where I was digging a little bit more on Polanco's murder. That sounded suspiciously like a sex crime to me. Yeah. On the face of it. When you have a uh, woman of that age dumped in a remote spot. Typically. Nearby her car. Yeah. Uh, perhaps a sex crime, which would be pretty much out of character for what we know so far, I would say. But maybe not. I mean, these are so scattered all over the place. Right. And very diverse crimes. Yeah. So basically, around this time in Germany, in 2008, you have a... Let's see what... Let's tally up. Well, wait a minute. Let's do that in just a second. There's okay. one more that we need to touch on before we tally it up. There was a uh, robbery... That happened soon after this, where a stone was used to smash a window, right? Okay. And the uh, police, in investigating that, talked to a couple witnesses that said that they saw a man <laughs> running away from the scene. A but, singular. Yes, singular man. But... The phantom's DNA is found on the stone used to break the window. So, mm. <laughs> we get the most bizarre part of this out of all of it in tallying this up that maybe we have a gypsy female serial killer who is a master robber <laughs> and master evader of law enforcement who also happens to be a transsexual. I'm not even kidding. Yeah, boy. They put this forth as a real theory. And that's where this uh, composite drawing comes into play. Yeah. Which is going to pop up any second. That she was either a transsexual... Or a uh, woman who looks a lot like a man. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hmm. yeah. Hmm. Uh, so you just throw everything into a bucket and say, that's this person is all the things. It, basically, that's what the cops did at this juncture. But, I mean, honestly, when you're looking at all of this evidence that is so un, there's, it's unprecedented, the s s scope, the breadth and depth of these crimes, you know, the variety in both style substance and geography oh yeah what are you gonna do i mean d you dna is dna right one would sincerely hope so which maybe that should should we give them the twist now well, let's start down that path <laughs> yeah yeah it was just looking for my section on that so if it's not this, you know, melting pot of a person, what else what could, could it, it be? be? What else could it be? You know, I'm reminded with thinking of that, I'm reminded of when Hannibal Lecter, of all people, yeah. told Clarice Starling in Silence of the Lambs, what did Marcus Aurelius say? First principles. Uh, what is a thing in itself? Right. And that is where we get into this 
starting well to and, wind and down. to and to and to quote or paraphrase Ayn Rand she was fond of saying if when you're facing a seeming contradiction check your premises because at least one of them will be wrong yes oh absolutely I was just looking for that. The way that this started unfurling even more, the French police found a guy who was um, filing for asylum in the country. Okay. I'm not totally sure what uh, country he was originally from, but he was filing for asylum. So is this and like in Paris? Probably or Versailles or something like that. Some way, be- some some region not bordering with Germany. That is what I'm getting at. Oh no, this one I think was in one of the regions of France that the uh, Phantom had affected. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. Okay. But at any rate, they had um, this guy's fingerprints. Okay. Because he you know, filed for asylum. Right. And come to find out, they come upon a, uh, like, third-degree burns over this guy's entire body. He's dead from a fire, and they're identifying him by taking DNA off the fingertips, right? So Not the asylum do... guy. He can't be dead. <laughs> well, no, the asylum guy's dead. But um, they take that DNA off the fingerprints. Oh, so the guy filed for asylum and then died? Yes. Gotcha. Yes. Gotcha. He, fi- he filed for asylum and was in France, I guess, waiting on that process to uh, see if it goes through and what have you. Okay. So they had his fingerprints and they had his information in a central repository. So they... Uh, when they found this burned body, they didn't know it was that guy at the time, so they took DNA off the fingerprints. Sure. And guess who popped up? The Phantom. The Phantom. <laughs> and the police, they took this guy's fingerprint after they took the DNA, and with the fingerprint, they found out who he was. And from that, they realized The only thing that could explain that DNA on that finger is what? Uh, Twins? Contamination. Oh. Contamination. They had to get a a case that was so fucking isolated from the other, from the crimes. Yeah. Before they could realize that. Oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah, because they just trusted that the swabs were pristine. Yeah, and it, before getting deeper into that part of it, we should stress that the swabs that are used at crime scenes for DNA collection yeah. are not the kind that you're going to buy in a massive like 500 pack at Walmart. No. They are the kind that are contained in a plastic tube, right? individually wrapped in a plastic tube with usually a screw cap on the top. And probably sealed, the entire thing sealed in plastic. Yes, yes, that further sealed. Um, so yeah, they come back to that and they realize that it has to be contamination. Now, there were some in the uh, German federal police who were suspicious of contamination much earlier than this. Yeah. But apparently they weren't heard. I'm not totally sure why on that. I mean, if you were to go to the manufacturer and say, we think there's contamination going on, they would say, no, that can't happen. Yeah. I mean, basically... Although they thought they had very tight standards in Europe. Well, that's but... that's my point. Is they the manufacturers would absolutely believe that they had that all buttoned up, and oh, yeah. that, that contamination couldn't happen. Yeah, 
I mean, they wanted to believe that their employees were following the protocols, but apparently somebody wasn't. Well, um, and what's they, and what's also additionally interesting is it's one person. Yeah, yeah, it was the same DNA, the same person, one person. They ended up tracing it to a uh, Polish female who worked in the factory. Is that it, is that the? Um... It was a, a, le- a factory in Stuttgart, or a lab in Stuttgart, checked several hundred unused swabs since April 2008 and didn't find the phantom or any, quote, rogue DNA. But they um, ended up tracing this further back to, that was actually the uh, first victim, Miss Schlanger. Oh, that was? Yeah, okay. on this on the uh, screen that. right now, <laughs> but um, yeah, they ended up chasing this back through the factory, and they found it was this one employee. Honestly, I would be interested to hear what happened to her after that. The employee. Yeah, I mean, I would hope she was summarily fired. Well, I guess it all depends, doesn't it? You know, uh, was she, you know, was she breaking existing rules? Was she, you know, contaminating through some loophole in the procedures? You know, did she know that what she was doing? You know, how much intention was going on? How much... um, Obstinance was involved, I guess, is the right word. Um, I, how much I was, you know, there's there, there could be a lot of factors that could cause me to not necessarily fire her, depending on, mm-hmm. you know, what you find out. Um, yeah, on the I other mean... hand, <laughs> you get to find out everybody will know if she breaks the rules again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Because she'll turn <laughs> Absolutely. up. <laughs> yeah. The whole yeah, world is the, watching, lady. <laughs> and I mean, the police, they just, they assumed, man. They assumed far too much with that. But yeah, in the sources that I was looking at, they didn't say anything about how um, she contaminated them. If they investigated that part of it. So I would say most of my sources on this yeah. are um, German media, like Der Spiegel is a big one. Uh, the Zeit, that's through there. Uh, the Local was another. Times of London. Uh, but this is basically pieced together from a lot of um, newspaper articles when you look into this. Um but so there's no it, um, nobody was willing to get into details of how the contamination. I think this was this was written up in Wired or something similar at the time. Yeah, I mean, then the media that I saw, there wasn't a whole lot of details on how she contaminated it. But yeah, it's been picked up a lot since then. Um, I don't know if you watch Adam Ruins Everything. I've seen on a True few. TV. Yeah. He does good work. The uh, episode that he did on forensic science, he just mentions it in passing on there. How contamination caused all this. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, it's it's not good for anybody that this shit happened. Well, actually, it's probably good for for it, there's there is an upside to it, but on the other hand, um, you know it's it's bad uh, publicity for forensics. Um, oh yeah, but you know, um, it it probably helped manufacturers everywhere. Uh, you know get a tighter grip on their procedures um yeah and 
you know, for better or worse, allowed, you know, uh, the courts to entertain the possibility that DNA and forensics are not infallible. Yeah, I think that's the most important takeaway from the big part of that. Um, We shouldn't question ourselves with the scientific method. We should be ruthlessly skeptical. And we should always check our assumptions yes. to make sure that they're right. Um, and if a possibility like contamination exists, get in there and ferret it out. Because the uh, dollar figure with this, the amount of wasted money that went into these crimes yeah. was about $18 million. Which is not, you know you know, uh, gross national product levels, but it's not nothing either. Yeah. I mean, that's $18 million that could have went to German schools or healthcare or what have you. Or other crimes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the Or like finding the real criminals. Exactly. That's the other big thing. When we think a crime is solved, we stop looking for the real criminal. Yeah. Which is and, uh, which is one of the problems with so many um, so many crimes. I mean, we're seeing, you know, it, uh, hardly a month goes by that someone isn't exonerated because of uh, DNA evidence. Oh yeah, yeah, or uh, um, exonerated or found, like yeah. that serial killer in uh, Iowa that they found recently. They uh, arrested him, three bodies in Wyoming and Tennessee, based on another one based off of familial DNA. Hmm. Um, yeah. But um, as far as I could tell from the research, they never managed to solve the murders of Schlanger or um, Walsenbach. Which was um, interesting. So those, yeah, I would have to take a deeper dive, but they might be connected. It's possible. Um, mm-hmm. You know, somebody doesn't just go grab cops out of their car and, and shoot them just on a whim. Well, those were separate from the uh, Valsenbach oh, and the Schlanger. Str- the stranglers, strangulations. Yeah. The very first two in the series. Um, Yeah, those were, on the surface at least, they were similar. Mm -hmm. Both of the victims were garroted. And um, both times, there was no sign of forced entry. They think that the uh, perpetrators somehow built rapport before they got in. You know, maybe a... uh, broken down car or what have you can i use your phone right um but when you yeah exactly a ruse but you know when you get down to it that's just surface too sure Uh, sure that's where i uh had asked uh oh go ahead so how many of these phantom crimes have uh, remain unsolved the, um, that's a good question on the petty crimes. Um, on the petty crimes, like the robberies and what have you, I am honestly not sure. Okay. Uh, now, with the murders, we have Schlanger, we have Walsenbach, who are both still unsolved. The uh, murder of the Georgians was solved, basically. Okay. The... Uh, the other four that I mentioned was also solved. And the uh, murder of the police officer was also solved within those. Okay. And that one was probably the most disturbing of them. She was actually the part of a uh, neo-Nazi crime spree. In Germany at that time. No kidding. Yeah. 
I was just bringing that back up to see the numbers on how many people they killed. I've got a good probably 30 pages on details on all this that's sitting in front of me right now. Um, yeah, so, you know, my understanding is, is that uh, neo-Nazism um, spread from Germany to the United States, um, and it's illegal in Germany, but they do oh, it yeah. anyway. But they do it anyway, and it's, it's, you know, it's not just guys, you know, goofing off in the woods. They are very serious. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, we had our own Nazis at the time, too, you know, yeah. with World War II. We did. Uh, you know, look at but like they were the smart Big enough Ralph. to kind of be quiet about it. <laughs> I mean, because <laughs> it was no. not a smart move to be openly Nazi during the war. But, um, yeah, that's true. The uh, murder series that Kaiser was part of was the National Socialist Underground Murders, mm. uh, known, colloquial, known colloquially in German as the NSU Mord series. It's a series of uh, murders by neo-Nazi thugs, the National Socialist Underground, um, perpetrated between 2000 and 2007 that they ultimately killed 10 and one wounded. Primary targets were ethnic Kurds, but they also went after uh, Turks. And um, one, actually, they also killed a Greek guy. Oh, and I then think her. we have that. I think we have that. Uh... Essentially, these assholes went after anybody they thought looked Muslim. In Germany. Yeah. I don't have that one image separate. But these guys were also known as skinheads. Yes. And yep. Because they would shave their heads. And, yeah. And um, that's what we call them here anyway. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's true over there as well. Yeah, but yeah, they were the trendsetters. <laughs> yeah, the punks. But um, yeah, the other interesting thing there, um, Officer Kaiser had been working undercover on a drug task force too, so that might have been partially related. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it's interesting. I don't think the murder of the nurse was ever solved. Either. And the problem is, is that, you know, it's going to be really maybe impossible to convict anybody on those crimes because of the contamination. Yeah. You can't go yeah, and re swab shit. Exactly. I mean, the whole damn thing is tainted now. Yep. Unless uh, somebody says, I did it and can provide compelling uh evidence to back that up i mean they're just not gonna be solved oh yeah yeah most definitely and i think that there's no doubt that the uh, majority of these are just not connected um although it's not it's not out of the realm of possibility that the first two were as i said you know, there's actually um, some German officials over there yeah. who still believe that it was the Phantom of Heilbronn and really? that it wasn't contamination. Yeah. Even though, so they're saying the factory worker did it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they actually believe DNA. there was this serial killer. But they the DNA matches the factory worker. Yeah. So they're saying but, the factory worker is the killer? I guess that would be the natural conclusion. I mean, it's a, I would think that would be in the realm of conspiratorial batshit. But, so, but the, so, so here's the deal. If you really wanted to 
you know, in a fictional sense, you know, some mm-hmm. super villain, you know, who wanted to cover their tracks would get a factory worker to um, put the villain's DNA in all of these swab kits that are going all over the country. So it would, yeah. it would, uh, you know, contaminate all these other cases and including his own. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that would be the assumption there. Right. That is indeed what they're thinking, but yeah, I mean, it's just, I don't know. With some people, those cognitive biases and those walls. Yeah. They're just, they're all over in this case. Well, yeah. So, uh, yeah, the, there's a um, interesting TED talk along those lines about the two different mentalities of uh, the soldier versus the scout mentality. And the, the soldier wants to obey orders and the scout wants to find out the facts. And the mm-hmm. problem is, is you have too many people in law enforcement and criminal justice who are soldiers and not scouts. Yeah. And they just want to, they don't want to put away the right person. They want to put away a person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just get somebody for it. Somebody. But grab somebody we can make it stick to, and that's what you know. That's that's our job. They think. Mm-hmm. Um, well, they should be. You'd think that police and prosecutors would be scouts. In other words, people who are looking for information. Uh, people who are trying to put away the right people. Yeah. But are, and, and, and I believe that used to be largely the case in this country, but that has really gotten lost over the decades. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, I think especially here, it's kind of taken a backseat to body count. Yeah. As far as that goes. And to padding the win loss column. But, um, you know, with a lot of that, and especially with the people who still believe it, it kind of reminded me of um, proportionality bias as being really sort of big there. Explain it, that. They think that because the, uh, propor- the series is so proportionately weird that the explanation has to be just as proportionately weird. Oh, I see. And that is why they bought this idea of the transsexual gypsy master criminal. And it's a so So the, kind of the opposite of Occam's razor. Yeah. Yeah, in a sense. It's the same reason. The most that complicated people... answer is the most likely, not the most, right. not the simplest. And the uh, best way of looking at the proportionality bias to me is looking at JFK assassination theory. Well, I was going to say any conspiracy, but sure, well, let's go with that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, people believe that. A great plot has to be responsible for bringing down a great man in that case. Right. But they don't um, understand that sometimes it can be just something small and crazy and mean. They can get in there and do that. Sure. Sure. It just... I mean... I don't know specifically that there are, um, you know conspiracies about the space shuttle that blew up on re-entry but that was a small thing that was a tiny little hole in the protection right yeah there you go a tiny little hole and it blew up a whole space shuttle and killed all those people that's a great example Um, um and it didn't require anybody's you know any kind of conspiracy. There were no Bilderbergers involved in that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, exactly. 
And if, like with uh, well, and, unless you want to call the environmental movement a conspiracy, which maybe some people do, but that's honest to God, they changed the glue on the tiles because of environmental uh, complaints, and that's what yeah. killed those people. Oh, well, yeah. And, you know, with conspiracy theories, I try to tell people, you know, just because I find conspiracy theories to be bullshit doesn't yeah. mean that I don't think there's real conspiracies out there. Right. They're uncovered every day by people like muckraking journalists, if you look around. Yeah, but they tend to be much more contained. You know, yeah, it's three guys breaking into a hotel, f- for yeah. example. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, um, there you go. Um, but it's not yeah, it, it's not thousands of people. You don't get no. thousands of people to agree to a conspiracy and then shut up about it. No, no, I mean you don't. That is the single biggest um, argument against the moon landing. Right. conspiracy right. well that one and i didn't realize this but apparently it would cost more to fake the moon landing than it would be to send the guy to the moon using 1969 technology and it, <laughs> it would cost it would cost more than the entire apollo program just to build a vacuum chamber large enough to hold the lunar lander. <laughs> wow. No, oh, I didn't know that part. Yeah. No, the, the part I was referring to was the uh, lasers to get the shadows right. Oh. oh they did it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so they didn't have computer graphics, so you're going to need millions of these gigantic lasers that are only available in red. So color photos are impossible. <laughs> oh, it's it's just uh, it's never ending. And and you know the yeah. thing is the thing about my my absolute conviction is that people believe in weird shit because it makes them feel special. Yeah, yeah, I could definitely agree with that. Absolutely. I they know like something nobody else validate. knows. <laughs> it's yeah. It's how you get people standing on corners with placards, yep, you know, trying to convince <laughs> everybody of shit cuz they I'm know special. something nobody else knows and that makes them special. I'm special. Look at me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they like to self-validate with that sort of thing. Yep. It's just sad when it becomes the narrative of otherwise rational people, too. I question that assumption that they're otherwise rational. (laughs) Well, I mean, this is true. I do my best to guard against it. But, you know, I've been fighting this sort of thinking since I was 18 and I was the first in my family to join a Masonic Lodge. Oh, well, God, you guys run the world, right? (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah us and the illuminati oh, what, what's your monthly check about like? that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah because you gotta I get even, a cut right <laughs> oh yeah and i even did my uh college history paper on the uh illuminati conspiracies and why they're bullshit so yeah illuminati yeah. masons uh templars uh, Bilderbergers. Bilderbergers, Dave Davos, uh, the uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, th- th- what's that commission? The um, oh, no, not the Warring Commission. No, 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 the ongoing one. Um, I can't even think right now. Yeah, it's there's all trilateral. Oh yeah, yeah. The Trilateral Commission and all this. I just, you know, what irritates me most about a lot of it, I think, is that it's not real reasoned skepticism. Because to me, a real reasoned skeptic says, okay, I'm going to demand you show me real evidence 
from a trusted source to back up your claim. If you look yeah. at like um, people who preach the anti-vax line, right, as one of them, based on a completely discredited and retracted paper printed yes. in the Lancet. Yep, Doctor Andrew Wakefield, who Total was a bullshit. fraud and a charlatan. Um, oh yeah, and also pandemic is a fraud along those lines. If you haven't checked that out, yeah, I've been um, avoiding that shit. I've been, I've seen a lot of posts on that, and I just been new. I don't, I don't need any more bullshit in my head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the only video that people should see with that is the uh, Stanford educated doctor's reaction to it. It's really good. But yeah, the, what irritates me most about that is that it's faux skepticism that these people have. It's not real skepticism. Right. You know, because if it were real skepticism, they would be looking at vaccines and saying, yeah, these are good for the vast majority of people who try them. You know? Yeah. I mean, maybe yeah. they don't work for me and my family, and that's cool. That's fine if you want to hold that opinion. Well, but it's... go ahead. Oh, and I just have an issue when they start using bullshit and misinformation to push that, in that opinion on other people. But, but and this ties in really well with the show, and that is because because you know you start you once you if you're gonna get involved in a in a conspiracy, you have to make start with assumptions about some large murky organization, you know whether it's the f pharmaceutical industry as a whole, like there's all these people who are willing to, you know, destroy lives for, yeah. for money. Because, well, always... you know, companies aren't real. They're people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, and what always gets me about their money argument is that vaccines have always been the weak sister in the They don't make industry. a lot of money off of vaccines. Exactly. You give them once and that's it. Maybe a now booster you... in in five years, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Know, it's not a it's not a daily dose kind of scenario. It's not right. A, it's and they've been around forever. Anybody can make them. Yeah, they're not making a ton of money off of this stuff. Yeah, it's not a daily antidepressant or cholesterol pill or Viagra. But... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, or or pain pills, right? And the, you know, there might be something to be said about pharmaceutical bad actors in regards to that, but I don't think there is in regards to vaccines. Sorry, not sorry. Yeah. Well, but see, you have to you have to have a bad guy to begin with to, in order to um, go along with any conspiracy. And you can't look mm -hmm. all that close at it. You have to make certain assumptions if you're going to be part of a conspiracy. And and that's the same problem they ran into with this fandom case is they were making these assumptions. Yeah. But kind of they, the opposite. They were assuming that everything was cool with their swabs when they weren't. Yeah. And they, they weren't, weren't willing, to, and because of that assumption, they weren't willing to entertain the possibility that a simpler explanation existed. Yeah, yeah, they weren't willing to check themselves along the way. And to see that, well, this is that absurd, maybe we should check our underlying assumptions right. to see that we didn't uh, totally f fuck something up. Yeah, I mean, it, and it, how, yeah, it would have been, uh, you know, really difficult for some underling to come up with that idea and push it forward. It would have been swatted down immediately. Oh, yeah. Well, and like I said a bit earlier, there were some people who thought it was contamination. 
yeah. much earlier than 2009. But like nope. I said, apparently Nobody they listened. weren't heard. Yeah. But, you know, that's how bureaucracies function, too. Yes, absolutely. Um, and, and to, you know, same kind of bureaucracy that has led to all kinds of bullshit happening. Um, oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, for anybody who's interested, I will be doing a uh, write-up of this one to kind of pack in all the other details to it. Um because there is quite a lot that I have in those notes that wasn't exactly covered. Um, right. I mean, we covered the high points, as it were. Um, I'll be doing a write-up on that over at Medium, and I'll share that on the Facebook page. Awesome. And, yep. You have a lot of fun with those write-ups, and they're good stuff. So <laughs> everybody go and check those out on Medium. Thank you. Yeah, I do. I need to get back into doing them more. Kind of got out of the routine of it with this whole COVID thing. Um, yeah, well, that's kind of messed everybody up, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody. We'll call that yep. a night. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Don't get coughed yep. on. <laughs> <laughs> don't cough watch on out others. for assholes when you're out yeah no kidding and for god's sakes if you're showing symptoms and you need to go out for something wear a mask or get somebody else to go for you if you can even yeah better. there you go yeah or get somebody else to go all right good night good night all <laughs>